Okay, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. This is John MacArthur. I'm Pure Insight moderator at Wikibon, and we're joined today by members of the Wikibon community, including Dave Vellante, founder, uh, David Floyer, also founder of Wikibon, Stu Miniman, Jeff Kelly, Bert Lattimore. Thanks uh, for joining us today. Thanks to everyone who's online. Today is Tuesday, April 3rd, and we're here to discuss data protection solutions for cloud storage offerings. Um, without question, public and private uh, clouds, uh, hybrid cloud storage offerings are here with us. They're on the rise. They're being used as a repository for uh, backup, for archive, um, and they're being used for primary uh, storage offerings too. So each, uh, each workload has its sort of own unique requirements and uh, characteristics. Today we're going to focus specifically on cloud backup and archive, and we are pleased to have Mike Adams, a storage specialist with Lighthouse Services, who's going to walk us through the selection process uh, that Lighthouse went through when they were selecting the infrastructure for their cloud storage offering. Our hope from today's call is that whether you're creating a cloud-like storage uh, architecture for your own environment, uh, for internal uh, private use, or you're, uh, or you're uh, thinking about building a cloud storage offering as a service to serve your own external customers, you'll find today's information helpful. So welcome, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Stu. I appreciate being here. Uh, that was John here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, before we get started, um, just a few logistics. If you are not speaking, uh, please press uh, star six to mute your line. And if you want to ask a question or contribute to the discussion, just press star six to unmute your line. So it's the same star six to mute, star six to unmute. Um, uh, but please feel free to, uh, to chime in, uh, join in on the discussion. So Mike, um, again, thanks for- Can I just um, oh, yeah. uh, let people know we're, we're live on siliconangle.tv oh, yeah. if you want to watch. Uh, Good you point. Can, you can tweet us. Uh, I'm at dvellante. Um, that's probably the best, <laughs> best uh, 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 handle, or at Stu, and we'll get the questions to John. Great, yeah, thank you. Yeah, again, siliconangle.tv, right. um, live streaming there. So uh, Mike, why don't you kick it off for us as, and uh, Tell us a little bit about your role at Lighthouse Services. Yeah, so thank you very, thank you very much. So I work for Lighthouse Computer Services. I've been with the company 13 years, and predominantly I work in the storage practice area. We have a bunch of different practices. I focus on the storage practice. You know, my, my kind of my overall role is uh, twofold. You know, I work with a lot of our customers who are typically you know, some of the decision makers in IT. Um, so I work with them and with their peers, uh, both the technical people as well as the C-level executives, in, in helping architect, you know, solutions, both on-premise and now in the cloud for um, their backup and uh, business continuity offerings. So, so that's, that's kind of been uh, my role and you know it started traditionally with SAN infrastructure and now we just see it leveraging out to uh, cloud technology. So what led you to make a decision to um, add a cloud storage offering? Well I think I think I think it's a couple of things. Um, are you guys hearing a lot of feedback? No, we're not. Um, you might want to um, mute your. I certainly am. You might want to mute your. Back. All right, hold on one second. Let me try to. Uh, me try All to callers this. are muted. And then Mike. Where's Mike? I lost Mike. All callers are unmuted. Mike, you're still there? Mike, is your line still live? I can still see him. Yeah. You can see him, but. I think Mike may need to dial in again. Mike Adams, you there? Can you just 
Hang on. Have him call back in, do you, Stu? Just on uh, Skype. So let's talk about this a little bit, John. I mean, you know, you got cloud storage, uh, you got the cloud generally, uh, people looking at it for their own internal uses. It sounds like these guys at Lighthouse are actually doing something that we talk about a lot here, turning IT costs into profits. In other words, flipping their IT infrastructure to actually monetize it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, they started off as I'm just, back. hey, welcome back. Um, is, that, is that any better? Uh, you sound fine to us. Yeah, so hold on one second. All callers are muted. And let me do this, and then let me uh, unmute Mike. Okay. We've so I can't unmute him. Hmm. All callers are unmuted. Sorry, Mike. Thought I could uh, unmute you and mute everybody else, but it doesn't look like we can do that. So go ahead, John. Okay. So, so again, we were we were just talking a little bit about your decision to add a um, a uh, cloud storage uh, services offering um, at, right. at, at Lighthouse. So, can you just walk us through that decision? Yeah, I think it's it's a couple of things. I mean, the marketplace clearly was was calling for that. You know, you see a lot in the, you know on the internet and in the trade rags on cloud based solutions and doing things in the cloud and you know of course that gets the, the curiosity of our customers you know as to well I need to do something in the cloud because sometimes their executives are saying that they should do it and then it becomes well what does the cloud really mean so from the lighthouse perspective we had twofold we could wait and and you know see where things settled and then sometimes our customers might be enamored by other solutions because people are talking to them about, you know, cloud-based offerings. Or we could kind of take a more proactive approach and, you know, work to solve business problems that our customers are having in the cloud and kind of keep it in, uh, in our sweet spot, which is storage and disaster recovery. So I think it's a, it's a combination of, uh, of both of those factors. Um, a, it's, it's kind of a natural extension of what our business needs to do, combined with the intersection of customers asking for cloud and what they can do. So we needed to have a, an answer for that, and so we're taking a proactive approach, and we're excited about it. Is the impetus, Mike, this is Dave Vellante, is the impetus people just want to you know, try it and learn, uh, stick their toe in, uh, or do you see it as more substantive than that? I, I see it as more substantive. I think that you know, the success of like people backing up their systems with carbonite kind of legitimize the concept. And what we're finding, and you know, I have one of my technical people that works for Actifio, Bill Thorpe is on the call, so we work together. You know, what we're finding is that, you know, not only do customers, when we're talking to them, not only are they wanting to like test the waters and understand it if it work, but then they're going the other extreme, which is, something we anticipated was, okay, if we have your data, how far can we take it? In other words, if we're going to start doing something in the cloud, how, how much can we do in the cloud? So the, the conversations are much more involved and encompassing than, than one might think. Did you build out new data centers to, for your cloud storage offering, or did you take your existing infrastructure and, and try to leverage that for the, for the cloud? service so um what we do is we extend you know it's, it's kind of a two two-phase process so one is we uh, our cloud infrastructure is off-site at a, a SAF 70 secure location and we have technology there which is based on actifio and i can certainly talk at length about that that is a receiver it's a multi-tenancy solution, and it's a, I want to say, a DR, or a business continuity target for our customers. And then we put a, a sister box or another um, appliance on the customer location to solve a problem, and then we marry the two for the kind of cloud offering. So we took some proven technology in Actifio, and that's the cornerstone and the enabler of our cloud offering. 
So your cloud offering starts with does your does your typical user um, start with a with a, uh, a solution on their premise and then they go to the extending it to the cloud or does it start or, or how does that work? Exactly, exactly. You know, there's there's obviously a communication and replication between a customer's production data center and our cloud or any cloud offering and the um, the Actifio appliance that we integrate into the customer's on-premise location solves a lot of issues and that's the real initial conversation we have with the uh, decision makers and then you know one of the things that people are looking to do is you know the reduction or elimination of tape which is what made VTLs successful, you know, years ago. But now customers are looking to do something more real time and not have to leverage last night's backup, you know, for that type of a disk-based solution. So we may solve a backup problem with a customer, and then if they're looking to do disaster recovery or business continuity, but they don't have a DR site, or they don't want a budget for one, or they don't have a viable second location, well, we can point the solution that solves the local problem to our cloud, and that just enables you know business continuity and, and disaster recovery in the cloud, so to speak. I, w I want to come back to that in a second because having the data available is one thing; having the applications available is another. So uh, uh, let's make a point to come back to that in a second. Um, sure, but. Uh, uh, I want to focus. I want to stay focused on the backup um, issue first. Are you finding that most of the um, most of the folks that you're putting the solution in are replacing tape altogether, or are they um, augmenting their tape backup today? Uh, they're, they're, the the vision and the desire is always to replace tape. You know, I was with a customer yesterday. We want to get rid of tape. The reality, however, is there's a lot of reasons that they can't do that because they may have things in archives, you know, at an Iron Mountain, Sun Guard, or wherever, and, you know, those things are in a vault, and they may need to recall them for compliance or litigation. So we reduce, drastically reduce the amount of tape. So customers tend to clean off their existing backup environment and use, you know, an integrated disk-based solution, and integrated is a key word, use that, um, and then they'll use tape for, you know, if they have to get something off-site until they leverage, you know, our cloud offering. And, and is, that about well, the is that about the cost of migrating data from, you know, from tape over to some other media, or is it about the immutability issue and prove, proving that this is the, this is the authoritative copy? What uh, I'm what sorry, just, what just what the context again? Yeah, for, for the for the for the people who are holding on to tape for long term archive, you know, is it because it's too expensive to migrate the data, or is it or is it because uh, they need to be able to authenticate the data uh, with with a with a particular timestamp? I'm just trying to understand um, yeah. why you okay, can't I, get I rid it. of all of it. It's really because the data in the situations where they're keeping tape, you know, and for, in an archive scenario, it's really because that data no longer readily exists in their production environment because maybe it's hospital images that are 10 years old, but the hospital has to keep them for 21, so they only exist on tape. So therefore, you know, you need to have a a backup and restore solution that can read that tape to bring it into your environment. So it's really for the long, long-term stuff. The the data that is in their environment, you know, there they're using, you know, the, the solutions we're providing and they're doing, you know, application-aware snapshots and long-term dedupe backups of their data. The, the off-site stuff, the, the tape is really if something is no longer in their production cycle and it really only exists on tape, therefore you need a tape drive and backup software that can read it 
to bring it back in. So that's a, a scenario where the use case is um, the, the the last resort, or the, the it's called a deep archive. Um, hopefully you right. never hopefully right. you never have to get to it. If you do, you know it's there and you're in compliance. But what about I wonder if I could push on this a little bit, Mike, because there's this concept that we can get rid of tape, but I, we've talked to a lot of practitioners who say, yeah, but I, as I say, we don't ever want to go to it, but if we have to, we know it's there, and the fastest way to recover from a real disaster is to load a bunch of tapes into a truck and drive it somewhere. That, that's actually faster than restoring over the, over the web and the cloud. So can you, can you talk about that a little bit? What's your experience there? Um, well, it, I guess it really kind of depends what type of an environment you have you have set up. Um, you know, it, in in this solution where we're you know we're architecting for customers, you know, the Actifio solution it, it has some unique characteristics, which is really why we we gravitated for it. I mean, if if you had a storage repository that could only hold a week or two's worth of data. And, and, the other, and the premise in that case was, you know, you just can't, it just doesn't make sense to store it locally because it takes up too much disk. Therefore, you know, replicate it to your DR site or vault it to the cloud. You know, you, you may have some, some challenges there, but there's, there's some key enablers with Actifio that, that mitigate those challenges. And that's really the fact that locally they have data deduplication. So that's one thing. So what does that mean? That means that I can set up SLAs for my customers and I can say, you know what? We can keep your VMware or your Exchange or your Oracle environment. We can keep that locally in a disk-based dedupe pool for a year, let's say, because all of the data is deduplicated across all the backup sets. So we're not, every time we do backups, we're not causing you know, a whole nightly cycle of data and storage. And then the other key piece, you know, when you're talking about um, replication between sites, you know, you have typically you have synchronous, which is if you want to keep something up in a DR site or in a cloud, and asynchronous. But one of the unique characteristics of uh, Actifio is that they have deduped async. So that allows us to replicate data back and forth um, from the cloud or the DR site to local if the data is not there locally. Bill, is there anything, hey, can, I know, can Bill, I, you're on the line. Can, can I uh, try, jump in here just for a yeah. second? Um, the, when you're trying to, for a, to get a disaster recovery, and this goes back to this tape issue, trying to recover a, a large data set or you know, a site over a, a line could take weeks or months to do uh, for, for any reasonable size, unless you've got an enormous, enormous pipe, which you've uh, you know, pre-designed. I, I, I don't, not even if it's deduped, you still have to undedupe it and then send it. So uh, what's your solution for getting the data to uh, another site or getting a data site that has been lost and has to be recovered from the cloud. Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, seeing as I have the, you know, one of my engineers um, who works for Actifio, Bill, on the line, I mean, I'm sure he'd be, he'd be happy to address that because that's kind of his sweet spot as well. Yeah, so what about that, Bill? We're trying to, we're trying to help our community understand the sort of merits and drawbacks of cloud-based recovery, and particularly in a disaster scenario. So I think we get the local recovery. The RTO right. is going to be great. If the building blows up, what do I do? What's the, how do I get that back? And that was to, and that was to the point that I wanted to come back to from earlier, which is uh, if, I, if it's a restore operation, do, does, the, does the end customer need to think about also having available all of the applications, and all of the and all of the servers and the network to run the application from the remote location, as opposed to thinking about recovering the data over the wire back to some other data. So, he, so help us squint through that, Bill. I mean, we're talking about the just the, the time it takes to 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 get move data around the cloud, and as John's pointing out, all the processes and other you know people processes et cetera and technology you need to recover. So, sort of two two questions there. 
Sure. So, um, so as Mike, Mike said, um, one of the things that Articio uses is we use this process that we call dedupe async. And what that is, is you have an Akipio device at a customer prem, it replicates into the cloud. Um, now, when we do our replication, we do so in a deduplicated format. So as you know, when it gets to the, the cloud site, it's still in its dedupe state. So what we do with dedupe async is we can select on a VM or a volume level, say, I want to blow these guys back up to their native format, okay? So the first time this operation goes, naturally, you have to do a full read of the data set for 50 gig VM or for <laughs> gigs. From there on out, um, what we'll do is we'll take our daily backups, we'll replicate them across the wire, and we'll rehydrate them. But what we're doing now is because we have intelligence at the block level between all of the pools, we're really only restoring blocks, okay? And those blocks will be your daily churn rate, okay? So site, to answer the first question, you know, site A blows up, um, what do we do? So we go to the cloud, we can run in the cloud environment whilst you rebuild um, your primary site, but once your primary site gets up, you have all your servers, all your storage, everything kind of sitting there ready to go. Um, what you can do is you can, A, you can sync back. Um, one of the ways we can do that is in a deduplicated format. Well, mind you, you can, whilst this information is moving from site A to go back to site B, you can still be running off of site B, okay? Um, once we get all that information across the wire, we have it rehydrated. Uh, we simply say, hey, I want to fail back, at which point it's going to have a communication base where it says between the two pools or the two systems, what blocks do you have that I don't, okay? So, um, again, it's, it's that cutover point where you say, now I'm ready to do my cutover. You press the button. It has that communication. And if you timed it correctly, hey, look, I've only got, you know, this many blocks that I need to sh ship over and, you know, then do a full fail back, if you would, to the primary site. Um, if you don't really have the time to ship all that deduplicated information across the wire, uh, another option that we could have is you could use um, some sort of USB device, um, like a Drobo or something like that. You can take our DD pool and you can copy it onto a transportable media, at which point you can send it to the other site and then you pick up, you know, just where I pretty much said where you do the restore, and then at the very end, you say, do that sync back, and you're done. Yeah. Can, can, can I jump in here? Sorry. Uh, th this seems smoke and mirrors to me. Um, if you've got a small system, I can understand how this would work well. But any reasonable size system, unless you've got a way of taking the data, uh, a pre-tested pre design way of taking the data, uh, in some sort of physical way, as you say, by putting it onto a disk or putting it onto a tape and taking it to a far site. The laws of physics, the laws of uh, the, the, the Internet, and you know, the increase in volume of data is driving up at the same rate as the, uh, the bandwidth is increasing. So there's, there's nothing that's changed over the last uh, 30 years here. The laws of physics are that you just can't get that data up to a site. And it's great for a small system or a subsystem that you want to recover somewhere, but a full-scale disaster, this does not seem to be adequate. Uh, it doesn't meet any RPO or RTO for any customer that I've worked with. So um, can, you, can you be honest about what you have to do to really recover at, a, at another site? You can't dedupe because that doesn't help you at all. You've got to fully restore the data. Um, how do you do this? So uh, when, when we're talking about recover, are we talking about scanning the primary A disaster recovery, you know, a disaster. You've, you've got to bring up the system on another site completely different and move the data to that site and, and move the applications to that site. Okay. So, so with all we do basic, um, on a daily basis, your customers do a backup. Um, yeah, we, we got all that. We got, you know, you, you, we've got all that. That, that's, 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 you know, many solutions for that. I'm a, I'm a little confused. Like, are you talking about the building goes down and I need to stand up my business right now, or are you talking about I've already failed over to the, the failover site and I've been running in that site and I need in my buildings now in rebuild yeah. and I need to. I th yeah, this is John. I think what's I think what's missing um, here, David, what you're not hearing is that the presumption here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that the servers 
um, to restore the application are at the cloud storage site, right? So that it's not just a cloud backup, it's a cloud backup with available servers to restore the applications at the remote site. So it's an active active it's an, it's, it's, a, it's an active passive. It's active active on storage and it's active passive on servers. Is, am I getting that right? So you're, 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 pro you're providing the full backup capability on that site uh, to, to, and run the whole of the data center from that site. Is that, is that the, the business model yeah. and that's what you test? Yeah, that's that's the piece yeah. that we haven't really discussed on this call. We focused more on the, on the backup, which is the premise of not getting the data. But the other piece of this is that in the cloud or co-location facility, we have a, you know a hybrid cloud design where we have the data that we've captured for the customer or customers, and now that data is mountable to application processes that live in the cloud. Right. So, okay, so is that a, is that your your standard uh, offering, or is this an enhanced offering that, that the whole thing can be recovered from the cloud? Uh, it's I guess it's an it's an enhanced offering. The standard the standard offering, and a lot of people have different you know go to market models. Our standard offering is you know there's there's one uh, cost for protecting your data off site. And then there's another, um, you know, cost for actually adding the application processes on top of that. Well, those I, are, those, go ahead. My, my, my premise is very simple, that your standard offering does not offer them anything uh, unless you can get that data back to another site. And, well, and the way you're, you're suggesting that that data goes back to that site is over the line. Well, so well, well, you hold, shouldn't be offering that standard offering. Well, hold you? on, no. But I, I, yes. Let's see. Now, so this whole thing started when we talked about eliminating tape. Right. But to eliminate tape um, and really sleep at night, you've got to recognize that you might need to get an enhanced offering, and that might offset the savings that you made on the tape side. But, but David, the standard offering gives you fast recovery locally. It's not necessarily... Um, a, 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 and that's goodness. I, I mean, that's and goodness, and right? Faster than yeah. and faster than you're going to get from restoring from tape at a remote site. Yeah, so that's so, all good. Right, absolutely. But but right, but right. in a disaster recovery context, so it seems to make a lot of sense from backup. I'm still trying to get over the hurdle of the DR scenario. Now, that, that, a lot of that's the bit that I'm getting at. Yeah. 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 So now here's the question: Is 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 this targeted really toward smaller and mid-sized companies? Thank you. Right. And that came a question from from Twitter. Yeah, I think that that's. <laughs> Yeah, I think the I think the premise is is mid-sized companies, uh, and, I, and I think what we're seeing too is some other customers look for a hybrid model. In other words, they they like this solution for certain environments, and maybe they have like a mainframe, let's say, or some other kind of one-off box that they want to put at a co-location facility to do other type of recovery for that environment and use this type of recovery for their, their open systems and their intel. Right. But, um, you know, I wouldn't, you know, and, and Bill, Bill works with these models all the time, but, you know, I wouldn't, uh, you know, sh short sight, I guess, the, the dedupe async capability, because we, we do, you know, have seen customers that, you know, if they, even if they have, Two or three terabytes of data, which which really isn't a lot nowadays, you know. But they could they could actually leverage, you know, you know, something like one, two, or three megabits a second pipe into the cloud to meet their backup needs. And once we have the data in the cloud, we can rehydrate it for um, business continuity needs. I, I guess there's two points. So, I, I guess there's two points I have here. One is that yeah. um, for a lot of small, mid-sized companies don't have a disaster recovery strategy. That's right. So. So this is clearly better than nothing. The second point is that I think the dedupe piece, uh, it, it really changes the role of tape um, and, and maybe dramatically lowers your cost of tape, lessens your reliance on tape as a recovery mechanism. That's all goodness. I think we're still skeptical about the ability to eliminate tape as a, as a, a source of last resort. Now maybe if you've got like a removable hard drive, like you were as you were talking about, that that can be a tape replacement. Yeah, but we yeah. just want to make sure our community understands that 
there's exposures here that you need to, to figure out and or purchase your enhanced, enhanced service. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I think, and I think customers are looking to do, you know, more business continuity because those application resources are there in the cloud and it's kind of a pay as you go uh, type model. You can either stand it up and have it sitting there waiting for a disaster and already pre configured, or, you know, you can, you can, you know, use those things to light it up in the, in the time of a disaster. So does the uh, most customers. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Most, talk most customers typically tend to have um, you know some hybrid offering. The the other thing too is you know with with the Actifio piece, I mean the SLAs you know can be granular such that you know for your your critical application, you know maybe your replication schema is you know something that the data is there you know every hour or every four hours. But then you have other business units that have SLAs that need that data to get there every every day or every two days. So you have the, the granularity to be able to change your replication and change your SLAs on an application by application level. Where that, that's pretty dangerous, isn't it? That's pretty dangerous. I mean, it, these days there's so much interaction between the systems. What they find if they try and do that uh, as a, in a practical test, it just doesn't work. Because the the prerequisites for other uh, uh, other critical data are all interlinked, so most most advice that's given is that you don't do that. You try and recover your, the whole of your active data. Well, I guess I guess we can I guess we can agree to disagree on that. I mean, most a lot of customers nowadays tend to know what their application interdependencies are, and and I think the the premise, and, and we're finding it gets a little bit simpler by the fact that a lot of people are virtualizing nowadays. So if we're if we're capturing, you know, the the VMs, you know, that contain the applications, and we're putting proper SLAs on those, um, you know, vSphere ESX type servers, you know, um, the customers are, are satisfied with that. Okay. Um, Another piece of good advice, though, is really understand your application dependencies. Because if you can, David, don't you subscribe to the notion that backup shouldn't be one size fits all? That that having an application by application SLA, again, to the extent that you can understand the interdependencies, is advantageous. Uh, 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 absolutely, but you've got to be incredibly careful and do a lot of testing on that because there, are, in, you know, you. You have some critical report that's required, and that requires uh, you know, a whole lot of other sub-reports, uh, 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 sub-systems uh, before it to have done it. So you have to test that and make sure that it's working. And it, 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 a, a glib statement, just like you can, you can uh, have different, just, just focus on just the key application, uh, hides the complexity of recovery in a real situation. And now your data is a long way away, and it's going to take a long time, and you could be weeks without it. Well, so yeah, it, 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 the, the cloud introduces a benefit, but it also introduces a constraint, and that constraint is the, the time to get that data back from the cloud. When, when, you've got, when you've got out there infrastructure as a service offerings available from co-location facilities and some of these uh, you know, disaster-tolerant um, 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 uh, kind of cloud server and storage offerings. Uh, the ability to have an environment where you can test your recovery uh, procedures on a much more frequent basis than when I was on the customer side, you know, I think are, exists there. You've got the data sets there. You've got available virtual servers to spin things up and test applications much, much more frequently as sort of an ongoing process than what you would have had you know, 10, 15 years ago. And that's the full height service, and that's, that's great. Right. If that's you can, right. If you can have the full service and test it, that's great. Yeah, and I think to Mike's um, point, you know, if you've got a small enough environment, and again, you know, what I'm, I'm sort of interested in, in, in Mike's perspective on when is it small enough to think about this notion of I'll make a copy, put it on a truck, and fly, or put it on a plane and fly it to the to the new facility. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is all about the business case, isn't it? It is. There's going to be some cases where the enhanced service is justified. There's right. going to be other cases where 
where it may not be, where keeping tape around is a, is a good idea. What are you seeing, Mike, in the field in terms well, of the business case? I mean, I think the, the thing that you have to keep in mind is, you know, when, when we use the term, you know, the cloud, I mean, in, in some cases, it's, it's no different than what a customer would do if they had a second location, right? Long as we can secure the appropriate bandwidth, which would be the same that a customer would have to secure um, from location A, a to location B, you know, we're providing a multi-tenancy target for that customer, and we're providing integration with a with a application and an OS stack that they don't necessarily have to build out. But the same type of, of challenges that, you know, we would be faced with, you know, they're faced with in a traditional environment today. You know, they need replication technology. You know, is it going to be synchronous, asynchronous? you know and, and we can provide that with this solution as well and then they need you know some customers and it's, it's very interesting because you know a lot of customers even though they've done you know site-to-site -site replication they still struggle with recovery because you know depending upon the app layer of application integration you know maybe the recovery points are only crash consistent and therefore they have to do a lot of rebuilds, right. you know, even with the uh, online replication. So, you know, we're not, we're not, I don't think we're introducing any, any new problems into the equation because um, we're still solving them the same way, making sure we have, you know, understood the RTOs, RPOs. I think that one of the uniqueness of, of this Activio solution is really the, the fact that it, it's so application aware. Um, so that when customers are doing replication, you know, it's, it's application consistent and not just crash consistent. What does that mean, application aware? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, I mean, if you take a traditional, you know, we talked about doing backups or doing snapshots or doing replication. I mean, if you take, you know, and you replicate data, you take snapshots of data, and it's done just at the storage level, you know, with, with the storage controller doing it, it's, it's, you know, there's data in flight, right? And it's just taking a snap of it. So it's better than not having anything, but it may not be completely consistent with the state of the application at the time. So, you know, what we find is to properly make sure that your data is available and, and, and mountable and usable in the, in the least amount of time, you'd like to have some application integration, whether it's, you know, with VMware or Oracle or SQL or, you know, all the predominant application environments where there'll be some handshaking going on, where there'll be some quiescing of the application to kind of destage de the data. And then, and then the storage infrastructure takes the appropriate snapshots or does the appropriate replications so that data is consistent. And that and that's where, you know, when we were evaluating products and, and we work with customers, they have a lot of point solutions and a lot of them aren't application aware. And that was, I think, you know, one of the unique things of, of Actifio is that not only did it provide a lot of the, the replication and deduplication, but it really spread its, its arms out into the application stack such that the data is meaningful. So is this using VSS? Is it is it Microsoft applications like Exchange? Um, excuse, and, uh, excuse me, I, I, I just have to in, I, I have to interject for a second, if if I may. Your um, your, your name, please. Is not unique in that there are other storage array vendors who do exactly the same thing. The same thing, NetApp, for example. Yes. Yeah. Who's that speaking? Yeah, that, if, if I if I said that it was the only one that did that, then I apologize. Or, um, Yep. Yeah, I mean, I because yeah, I'm very, I'm very well aware of you know, you know the, the other, this, the this other question I had was around using. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the the other question I had was around using tape on the back end of the cloud DR site if you need to have an SLA where you have to you know uh, recover at site A rapidly. I mean, isn't that a great use case for tape? For tape? 
Yes, I mean that's, there's there's two things there. I mean, in this in this cloud infrastructure, we have two soon to be three options. So one is you know we can back up the uh, because in the cloud there's backup components from an application perspective. So we could back up the applications, levering the the hybrid cloud services. You know the other thing is is we could replicate to a, a secondary site. If we wanted to, you know, protect our cloud and, and replicate it to a secondary site, and then the other is, and, and Bill, I assume I'm okay with talking about this, is that there is a a feature coming with the Actifio component that's going to be kind of like a a tape out feature to to, to dump right out of the um, Actifio appliance to tape. Bill, anything you want to add to that? That's, um, that's that's perfectly uh, legit. So Actifio will be adding a tape piece to um, the Actifio stack. So you know today we do snapshots, we do backups, we do deduplication, we do replication, we do dedu uh, incremental rehydration, um, and that's a very valid point. Let's face it. You know disk subsystems have been out there as backup targets for a while now, but people are still very much holding on to their tape. And it is very valid to say, hey, look, you know, if my data set's big enough and I want to keep a certain frequency on disk, no matter what kind of deduplication subsystem I'm going to use, if you want to keep that stuff around for seven plus years, um, you're going to start brushing up against, you know, the, uh, the cost of this thing very quickly, right? Um, with data domain, with, uh, you know, an extra grid or an active fuel appliance. So tape definitely has its place. And, um, you know, Actifio sees that and says that, hey, look, we can create an SLA that says keep a snapshot around for a week, then press it down into our dedupe tier and replicate it. Um, maybe we want to rehydrate it, and then maybe we want to take a copy and punch it off to a tape for a remote site for 7, 10, infinity. Hey, who asked, who asked that great question about the tape use case, even if it's just your first name, if you're not comfortable giving your whole name? Okay. Um, why don't Why don't we uh, open it up to the rest of the community here? Uh, other people who might have questions um, for Dave, David, for Mike. This is um, Scott Lowe. Um, I've got sort of a, a higher level question that may have been um, uh, addressed somewhat earlier, but I'd, I'd be really interested in understanding sort of the decision making process, Mike, that your customers go through. Um, who's involved on their side in these sorts of decisions and um, and what kind of a process are you seeing in place for your customers to to um, move forward like this? Okay, so uh, good question, Scott. So typically, you know, we're dealing with the, the technical people, the directors, and probably more so than usual, you know, the, the, the CIO type because of the, you know, uh, cloud aspects of it. But it, it, it starts out, you know, solving a local problem. So it gets to uh, figuring out what type of use case that we're solving for a customer. You know, we're not replacing their existing production storage. We're complementing it. And we're typically solving, you know, local backup and, and snapshot and, and data protection issues um, or, or copy management and cloning. So that's typically the use case where customers will start, and then it then it you know morphs into well what what are we doing for offsite for disaster recovery you know seeing as we're leveraging you know enhanced technology to minimize the copies of data that we have locally you know how can we kind of get rid of tape and and, and do that type of philosophy um, better than we're doing now and then you know there's the where the, the uh, executives come in from the top down saying, you know, if we don't have a DR site, you know, do we need to build one or what can we do with, with a, an infrastructure like you're proposing? Um, so it's, it's, it's still typically all of the, uh, the IT folks. It's just, in my opinion, it just goes a little bit, a little bit higher up the chain because of the, uh, the cloud initiative. So this is um, sort of from an executive level um, a, a, a big build versus buy decision. Are we going to build our own VR site or are we going to buy the service? Right. And then, you know, when we look when we look at DR, do we want to have it CapEx or OpEx? 
You know, would we rather pay by the by the terabyte, pay by the month, you know, and then be able to, you know, dynamically leverage application processes, you know, as kind of a just in time, or do we want to secure a facility and, you know, put like infrastructure and like uh, application servers in that environment. Um, and this just provides, this is a logical extension for customers that may choose to not build their own DR site and, and look for DR capabilities. Whereas today, they're kind of, you know, if they're not going to build a DR site, then they're left kind of with uh, the traditional tape backup, which they t typically tend to want to get off of. So it provides a nice middle ground. Other questions in the community? Yes, I, um, have, I have one. Yeah. Hold on, David. Go ahead. Yep. Um, yes, have you considered using uh, object storage in your uh, sites for managing the archives, long-term archives? Can, can you give us your first name or whole name if you choose? Yeah, my name is uh, Kay uh, ben Eric. I'm calling from Dell. Thank you, Kay. Okay. Uh, no, to date, I haven't. Con we haven't considered that. Um, we have. We have not. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? David, you are uh, about. I to had ask a question yeah. on the 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 uh, types of. You said the uh, application integration. Um, could you expand, you, obviously, uh, Microsoft with VSS uh, is part of that. Do you have a set of applications? Uh, for example, NetApp, NetApp have a whole lot of applications that uh, do exchange, um, uh, Snap Manager, for example. So they have one for exchange, one for SQL. Do you have a set of those uh, applications? Which ones do you cover? Uh, how, how do you how do you how do you decide what what is uh, can be um, application specific and what can't? I think you know I'll let Bill address that because they're rolling out support for more applications as we speak. You know, um, but the, but there, it's similar functionality to the Snap Manager products, which which I'm aware of. But you know, Bill, maybe you can rattle off the list other than you know Oracle and SQL and VMware. Yeah, sure. So um, for for virtual hosts, what the way Actifio really protects its environments is we leverage VSS along with VMware tools to get application consistent snaps of all the underlying applications. So it's basically VSS um, snapping Microsoft products. Today we have you know tight integration with SQL um, Exchange. We also have uh, coming out in five in a five zero release um, Oracle integration with Oracle Harman. So we can do um, Full tight integration with Oracle Rman via um, via um, Rman scripting. So, in short, I mean, we can do that today. But in short, what we're going to do in 5.0 of our release of the product is we're going to uh, increment, uh, leverage Oracle's incremental change block tracking to protect Oracle. Um, and then the next step for us is to um, protect Isilon systems uh, via the Isilon API. So. Um, when that rolls out, we'll be able to select um, a volume of volumes in which to protect, and then we'll leverage Isilon's API to keep track of what's going on within the Isilon system. And then the next time we look to back up that system, we'll take only the change blocks. Hmm. And th there's, uh, there's a growing amount of uh, Linux in, the, uh, in, in operations today. What, um, what do you do for a Linux environment? So it really depends on whether the, um, the Linux host is in-band or out-of-band. All of our features um, within Actifio are um, very versatile, um, meaning that you know, we're a Linux-based appliance as well. Um, so we have the ability to execute um, pre- and post-scripting. So if you have a way in which to get the application into a freeze-thaw state, then we can get application-consistent backups is the short of it. Okay. We do have we have a connector coming out for Windows and Linux, and it's basically going to be just like a backup uh, like a backup agent, where it's going to ride on the host, 
Um, it's going to do a full backup the first time. It's going to do incrementals every time they're on out at a file base, um, you know, and push it over to the Actifio. And the other piece about the Actifio is, um, which Mike really didn't say, is around recoverability. So the Actifio is basically, you know, a, um, a block level device. And because of that, we can facilitate mounting directly off of us. So think for a minute like a VM recovery. If you have a VM that goes down hard, um, we have a full copy of that, not only in its native, but in its deduplicated format, which means we can present back to VMware um, as RDMs. And we can tell VMware, because we use the v, uh, v storage API, we can call VMware and say, hey, I want you to mount this backup as a new VM. You can power it on and start running off of the Actifio subsystem. And in the background, storage vMotion, the blocks back to where they need to be. Uh, we have customers using this where they say, hey, if my VM goes down hard, I just run off of Actifio. So my recovery time objective is, you know, however long it takes to do a mount, which in most cases is less than a minute. Is it reasonable to assume that we wouldn't want to restore the same level of density of VMs on a, on a server as, as what we might be running in a, in a, with a traditional high performance storage system? Because I know performance is sometimes an issue in VMware environments when you have uh, a lot of density. Actually, I think we've got a pure insight coming up on that uh, soon about how do you maximize VM density right. in a cloud uh, offering. So I'm just curious what you get. Um, that's a good question. It really depends on what the performance need of the underlying VM is. Um, the cool part about Actifio is because of our storage virtualization layer, you can put high performance disk behind us, but as when we go out and sell it, the entire stack as an appliance, we sell two terabytes, 7200 RPM SATA disks. So, you know, point taken, if you've got, you know, VMs running on, um, you know, SSD or, or fiber channel disks, and you need that same level of performance, um, if you power on off the Actifio device, um, you're gonna, you potentially could see or will see a you performance will. hit, but you, um, you know, what you have to really consider, if this VM's down, how do I recover it, okay, and how do I recover it quickly? So is it better to, you know, restore the whole thing in the amount of time that it takes to do the restore, or is it better to fire the thing up, give the users access, and let them kind of suffer a little bit? <laughs> things operating as your storage you're motioning it back and, and well, I don't have the answer for that for every every environment but it is uh, definitely a deployment consideration sure what about the uh, the services angle here um, are, is, is lighthouse providing um, any kind of business impact analysis service up front for for clients can you talk about that a little bit yeah so we have uh, so the answer is yes we have a uh, a subsidiary company that's called Compass that used to be part of our group and they split off um, and that's, that's what they'll do. Um, that's what they do for a living. Uh, the reason we ended up splitting up is sometimes customers wanted to have the, you know, business impact analysis done and then they wanted to have the remediation and some saw it as a conflict of interest. So we have a group, separate and distinct, but a good relationship that goes in and helps customers with the, um, you know, the RPOs and the RTOs and, and doing the business impact analysis. And then that will ultimately turn into a discussion of what the appropriate technology solution is to meet those requirements, and then it'll flow from there. Okay, good. A um, few more minutes left on our call today, so I uh, just want to poll again, see if there are any other questions in the community. Anyone? Yep. Can you yep. hear me? Go ahead, yep. Yeah. Hi, it's Alex Williams of uh, Silicon Angle. I'm, I'm just curious about the whole issue of, you know, of uh, the data that is coming in such huge amounts from the Internet and from all, all different sources. And that's only going to increase, you know, over time, you know, with his, and I'm, Curious on your feelings on how this affects backup and how this affects your own technology direction going forward. I'm not. A, I'm not sure. I. I'm not aware that question was directed to me. I'm not sure I completely understand the question. Well, there's just so much data that's going to be 
that that any size enterprise is going to have to manage, and, and it's just a constant struggle to keep up with it. And you know, I, I'm curious on your, you know, on some additional perspective on that. When you, you know, David brought it up a little bit um, when when he was asking you some questions, um, and you know, further, it, I think it raises questions about you know backup, you know, backup overall, and and, right. and how you manage it. I'm, okay. I'm just looking for more insight. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a good question, and ultimately it, it covers an area that we didn't we didn't really discuss because we jumped into the cloud. But one of the one of the premises of you know the Actifio solution is you know it it eliminates the redundancy of data. So yeah, data does grow. You know, certainly production data. But what happens is your copy data grows five, ten, fifteen, twenty percent of growth because you got copies for clones, you got copies for backups, you got copies for snapshots, you got copies for replica, you know, you're treating VMware as a different beast, so you have copies for that. So, you know, in a customer environment, you know, the data, you know, kind of can tend to be out of control and it's managed by, you know, a bunch of different tools acting upon that data and creating that data. And, and the Activio solution at a customer's location you know, kind of gets a handle on that beast because you're really only using, you know, one dedupe storage pool to address all of the needs of the stuff we've just spent the last hour talking about, the snapshots, you know, the, the VMware, the copies, the replication. So um, while data is growing the production data, you know, this solution, independent of the cloud, this solution at a, at a customer's location, keeps the copy data in line with the production data growth. So I, I think the the question the, the question that was asked uh, from the from the person from Dell uh, gets at the key issue here which is if you want to use that data for more than one thing which is for example for archive uh, and and in integrate the archive with the applications you're going to have to go to a different way of doing it which is uh, an object uh, object uh, a file or object system way of doing things, and um, that that's somewhere in the future. But that's where the end end game here is. Um, if you're going to actually take advantage of that, your, your solution is really pretty well entirely uh, a backup type solution, and and it if it gets used for archive because the data is there. But uh, going forward, there's, there's got to be a lot of greater smartness in being able to use that data. And, and be able to extract it much more easily um, if you're really going to take a handle on the, on the whole problem of, uh, of data management. Do you agree? I, you know, I, I know that, you know, customers are successful using, you know, one common repository to address, you know, backups, and snapshots, and clones. So, as well as, you know, VMware. So that kind of the, the areas, you know, archiving can be a, a little bit of a, of a different beast depending upon, you know, some of your litigation holds and, and things like that, you know. Um, but as far as the traditional multiple copies of data for the reasons I just mentioned, you know, Actifio does is really as good, a, as good of a job as, as any technology that I've, that I've seen you know, in use. Well, listen, um, we've reached the end of our hour, so I want to thank everyone who uh, participated today. Um, to our, our speakers, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, also to uh, Alex Williams, to Kay Benrock, Scott Lowe, uh, David Floyer, thank you for your questions. Um, we will have uh, six research notes posted on Wikibon within the next 48 uh, hours. Um, including a summary of today's call, CIO action items, technology integration, um, organizational action items, some recommendations for suppliers, and, uh, and some discussion about what we can get rid of with, uh, with this sort of an approach. Uh, Wikibon is a wiki, so we invite uh, everyone to not only read the articles that are posted, but also jump in, edit, and enhance them. Um, just a reminder also that we have another Peer Insight next uh, Tuesday, April 10th. It's actually a very 
timely because we had some discussion around classification or whether or not you should classify applications. Um, next, um, uh, next week we're going to have a VP of IT at Animal Health International talking about how he implemented a zero data loss infrastructure for all of his applications, um, including test and dev. <laughs> so at, at async distances. At, a, at async distances. So, so that would um, be a cool call. So I look forward to uh, having the community join uh, for that discussion. Again, thanks, everyone, for attending today. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you.